Thank you very much. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, let's get going. I'm going to give you the cases. Uh, as you know, we are, uh, we've started a uh, lockdown uh, on uh, Saturday. Um, the cases have persistently uh, gone in the 3,000 range now across the province um, with uh, three or four days in a row. Today was 3,065 increase, um, again, led by uh, GTA. Ottawa had 165, and we had a fair number of cases uh, over the weekend. Uh, I think we added a record of 115 between the Friday and the Monday. And um, uh, I'm just going to show you uh, some of the other... Uh, where are we here? Here we go. So um, we're up to 400 cases, uh, active cases. Actually, the number went down because we uh, had some that were resolved. We're, um, we're at over 3,500 uh, total cases. We've got 34 hospitalized, nine in the ICU. Um, and uh, we're, uh, we continue with outbreaks again. Uh, that includes school outbreaks and so on and, and, other, and other workplace ones. Um, <clears throat> and uh, one of the things that I just wanted to sort of, you know, bring up to you was the change from yesterday was uh, 25 cases and every day we have, we we're adding cases, 25, 30 cases. And um, uh, I know today we had many cases as well. So I think tomorrow's number is going to be bigger than today's number from what I was told by my staff just before I came on. The, uh, the numbers that we're looking at is the rolling average. And again, you're kind of seeing sort of an uptick and then a downtick in the numbers. Uh, clearly, clearly above the red, clearly, clearly in the gray zone um, uh, area here uh, with, our, with our numbers. And so that is uh, something that we need to, to keep an eye on. And, um, you know, I just wanted to uh, uh, comment on uh, just a few things uh, first, uh, because I got a lot of questions about it. I know that, um, you know, the... Um, uh, government uh, uh, put us into uh, the lockdown and uh, uh, there was a lot of um, uh, expectations that there would be they would go further than that and uh, um, I, I don't know if you've a lot of you because by the questions that you've asked a couple of media have asked me questions about this and why because um, I know some of my colleagues wrote uh, as well about about it but uh, uh, we released this uh, last week um, uh, in conjunction with the Ontario Medical Association and I wrote as chair of Council of Medical Office of Health and basically um, uh, we said that um, we, we thought that shutdown uh, because of the uh, uh, growing case numbers, disease severity, rising ICU admissions and infection patterns among younger people to do, due to the VOCs, um, uh, we strongly believe that a stay-at-home order is required to success, successfully prevent cases and strain on the acute uh, care system as we continue to vaccinate more Ontarians. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to clarify that this is a memo that this is a press release that we sent out last week and my other colleagues just followed suit and this is on behalf of all medical offices of health. And like I said, I've had several questions about this so I will, this has uh, cleared it up, um, I think, uh, in that regard. Um, the other, the other thing that we're seeing as well is uh, is uh, school cases as well, and and um, they're they're another uh, issue as well. As you know, uh, we have had uh, we have had uh, uh, I've had to close four schools over the weekend, um, and I just want to explain what the rationale was. We've had 61 cases in 27 schools over the last uh, two weeks or so, and um, I, I just wanted to uh, to uh, talk about that. Um, uh, we have 120 schools, and so uh, we uh, not all our schools have cases, obviously. And um, uh, the the issue is that I closed some of the schools. Uh, uh, the four, uh, uh, most of the four that we closed, we closed them. Uh, actually, some of them were not even an outbreak. But because, uh, for example, one school had uh, four separate cases all over the school, they were not linked. So it was not really a night, an outbreak per se. However, uh, the, the the contact tracing, the, the that would and, and the isolation of school staff and, and personnel and, and and students would be a, a, a big a big um, operational uh, challenge to the school. And so uh, I closed them for that reason, not because the schools are not safe. You know, the other thing too is like we have a lot of people to, to call and, and, and so on. So um, when we get a case like that, and especially if it's a couple of classes, so it's more for operational reasons uh, that we did. There's one, uh, one of them had multiple cases as well. But again, the, for the most part, like I said, the schools in, in my mind, you know, are safe and they, we do not get cases from the school into the community. It's the other way around. Um, uh, that's what we're seeing uh, locally and provincially as well. As a matter 
matter of fact, today uh, there was a, a, a statement by the Children's Health Coalition, uh, CHEO, Sick Kids Hospital, and so on, uh, you know, uh, saying that um, we want to keep the four walls inside the schools COVID free, which means that we need to take measures, drastic measures outside of those schools. So they held for the strictest measures to be put in place to reduce community spread and reverse the trend. And um, as leaders, they're, they're, they're calling for the schools be the last to close and the first to open, which is, I, I agree with that as well. Um, you know, there's a, this is split. Half the parents and people think they should close. Others think they should continue. Uh, there is a, there is a closing schools for prolonged periods of time. So we know now causes long-term issues in children, particularly it, it uh, amplifies uh, pre-existing disparities, racialism, and so you know uh, those type of things. Um, this social disadvantage. Those kids get. This disproportionately affected. So we got to be quite careful on it. Obviously, uh, we've got a couple of more days and then uh, there's going to be that spring break. Again, I'm asking people during the spring break, please, 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 please stay at home. Um, don't go to do sleepovers or play dates or anything like that. Um, we don't want what happened in Christmas to happen during the spring break. And again, um, uh, we're, we, we're, we're asking for, and I asked again, and I know that it's being discussed, discussed today, further measures. I'm not the only one. Ontario Hospital Association, Ontario Medical Association, nursing associations, ICU physicians, everybody is asking the government to add a bit more to, these, uh, to this lockdown, essentially for Toronto, for example. Example, the the lock, this lockdown did not add much. They just removed patios, patio dining. Um, nothing much changed, and the numbers, you know, were persistent like that for weeks. So um, we need to we need to add uh, stay at home order for sure, um, and and other uh, perhaps uh, closing some more non essential businesses and those type of things. And I do know that's in discussion. So we should be getting um, um, a response sh soon. We know that uh, vaccinating is, is is we're increasing vaccinations, but vaccinations alone, given the the rate at which the VOCs are growing, and by the way, in our area they make up. 66%. We have over 222 um, of VOCs, of all except one, our UK variant. And so that, that's outpacing our capacity to vaccinate. So we need to, that little break, that, that circuit breaker, but which should be a full lockdown, which to my mind, a full lockdown includes a stay at home order um, because we want people to stay at home, not to be mobile. And again, uh, if we don't do that, we fear, and the modeling will show has shown that um, you'll, it'll just go on and on and on, and you have to kind of go back and forth and back and forth. Whereas if we do one last full lockdown, which includes stay at home, um, limiting uh, travel outside your home, and so on, uh, for non-essential reasons, uh, and now we'll start vaccinating, you know, at a higher rate between now and uh, you know the end of this month. I do believe that we'll come out in a better place. So I think that's quite important for us to uh, to uh, to share with everybody. Uh, in terms of our other um, issues, you know, long-term care, again, nothing much just changed. Again, out of the uh, long-term care and, and, re and, long and retirement home outbreaks, uh, only one has the, um, actually two have cases. One is one resident and the other one is the McConnell um, one as well. Nothing much has, has changed in that regard. Uh, so now I just want to I want to spend some time uh, really on on vaccinations and updating everybody on on vaccines and just to give you a, sort of a bit of a an update. Um, so far, we're actually almost up to uh, thirty thousand vaccines uh, administered in our area. If you include what we did over the weekend and today, and um, um, and uh, we have now booked clinics moving forward uh, up through May seventh. Uh, 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 and uh, we will be uh, able to vaccinate at that point in time between now and then uh, about another 33,000 people. That's based on the number of doses doses we're getting. And uh, <clears throat> we have, um, are, we're up to 70 plus. As of tomorrow, we will be 60 plus. That's going to be an announcement. Uh, it was my, announced today, but as tomorrow, it opened up to 60 plus so people can book in that regard. Um, and then we'll go over some of the other things. But for from our health unit's point of view, we're getting a bit of an increase of our supply so we know what we're getting so we're able to uh, have clinics uh, for example uh, next week we'll have 12 clinics and then um, each week after that uh, for the following four weeks we're going to have uh, eight clinics a week each of which is going to be vaccinating over uh, over um, uh, a thousand people or so at least and we'll be doing a couple of those a day so um i do and this is because we've tapered it around the numbers we know that 60 plus and all that 
uh, you know, we know what our 60 plus population is. We know uh, what the what the 70 plus was. We've done the 80, and so um, we're now looking forward to to that. And again, uh, you, you'll there will be an announcement again. But uh, as of tomorrow morning, um, uh, people can book uh, through the provincial system for the health unit and um, uh, 60 plus. I'm also I also want to at this point give a bit of an overview um, of the of the. Uh, uh, latest sort of, uh, uh, here we go. This is the latest um, <clears throat> overview of phase two. And so uh, right now we're, we've done 75, we're over, we've done 70 and over. And as of tomorrow, we're doing 60 and over. So that's going to take, uh, take us into sort of, uh, you know, the first week of May or so. Uh, we're starting to uh, work with our primary care practitioners, uh, our uh, doctors and, and, and community health centers to vaccinate uh, high risk uh, individuals with uh, certain medical conditions and so on. Uh, we've got some AstraZeneca for that that we'll be uh, sending through to uh, public health, to our primary care partners, uh, as well as the, there are three pharmacies um, uh, now on the list and we should be getting some more pharmacies. I'm trying to get one in Cornwall and in Ingleside as well. Uh, to be able to deliver uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine as well for people 55 and over. Uh, High-risk congregate settings, uh, as a matter of fact, we have teams ready to go uh, and we'll be going to lodging homes, group homes as of this weekend, um, delivering vaccines uh, through a mobile clinics. We're also going to be uh, doing senior homes as well, senior apartments. Um, that uh, there's, there's multiple in SDNG and in Prescott, Russell and Cornwall area, and we'll go there as well. Uh, highest risk communities, again, it's as less in in our area, but it's more for GTA in Toronto is a priority. And then we're talking about essential workers who cannot work from home. I'm hoping that that will be pushed a bit earlier uh, because that includes uh, poli um, police that weren't vaccinated in the first phase, uh, teachers, daycare, and so and so on. So um, that's where we are based on the numbers. But for, for our population, again, uh, 16 over may be able to vaccinate individuals who have high risk medical conditions can be vaccinated through physicians offices um, uh, moving forward. Uh, but that's that's where we are right now. And um, um, based on our numbers, that's what we're projecting to be able to do uh, over the next uh, four weeks now into the first week of May, we should be getting our allocations probably in the next week or so, uh, or projection of allocations may, moving May into the full month of May, hopefully they'll be higher. I do know that uh, Astra, uh, that um, Janssen and Janssen will be made available in Canada, likely in April, towards the end of April. So that that's uh, going to be an additional one. And I know that the numbers of vaccines are going to be substantial as well uh, moving forward. Donc euh, bonjour tout le monde, euh, je vais commencer avec euh, avec les chiffres ontariens. Euh, euh, effectivement, nous voyons euh, Euh, nous voyons euh, euh, toujours euh, des, des, euh, une augmentation des cas importantes à travers l'Ontario. La plupart des cas sont de variantes. Euh, en effet, ça fait quelques jours de fil qu'on qu a trois, plus que 3 000 ajoutés par jour en Ontario. Euh, y, euh, et euh, toujours Toronto, autour de Toronto, même au niveau des cas quotidiens, euh, Ottawa avait 165. Et nous aussi, on commence à voir des débits importants au niveau de nos cas, malheureusement. Euh, au niveau euh, au niveau des euh, de, de notre de, de notre situation ici euh, c'était triste cette fin de semaine on a eu on a eu pas mal euh, euh, je pense 100, euh, on a eu 115 cas entre vendredi et euh, lundi euh, et euh, hier on a ajouté euh, je pense 24 aujourd'hui nous avons ajouté euh, euh, une autre 25 Euh, donc, euh, on est rendu à 3566 cas avec 400 actifs. On a toujours 34 hospitalisés, donc 9 sont en soins intensifs. Euh, nous avons euh, euh, des flambées euh, aux écoles où, euh, et quelques euh, places de commerce aussi. Et nous avons aussi des euh, maisons de retraite et des groupes, etc. Euh, nous a, donc, au niveau euh, des euh, moyens mobiles, Euh, on voit toujours, toujours, on est vraiment dans la région rouge, euh, fortement dans le rouge, en effet, plutôt vers le gris euh, dans notre région. Donc, on voit que on est pas, on, on, ça, les chiffres sont augmentants, euh, malheureusement, dans nos cas. Il faut dire aussi qu'il y, y a juste quelques jours qu'on euh, a commencé avec, euh, avec euh, le, le coup... Euh, les fermetures, etc. Euh, à mon avis, sont pas assez. Euh, on a publié il y a quelques jours, euh, en collaboration,
collaboration avec l'Association médicale d'Ontario, euh, une release de presse qui, que, que j'avais demandé euh, d'ajouter euh, des, des ordonnances de rester chez vous, parce qu'on on voit beaucoup de mouvements. On a, la plupart de nos cas sont des personnes qui se visitent une à l'autre, et après ça, ils reviennent à la maison et, et infectent toute la maison, euh, leur, leur foyer. Donc, à ce moment-là, euh, ça, euh, ça prend vraiment, je pense, une ordonnance. De, euh, je sais que le gouvernement est en train d'en discuter, d'ajouter d'autres, parce que ce n'est pas juste nous, c'est l'association médicale, l'association des hôpitaux d'Ontario, c'est les infirmières, c'est les médecins de soins intensifs euh, qui demandent tout ça. Euh, donc, euh, je pense que euh, c'est le temps de, 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 vraiment, de vraiment essayer de rester le plus possible chez nous, euh, de, ne, de ne pas quitter, euh, sauf pour les, les fins, euh, les fins euh, essentielles. À mon avis, euh, et pas juste moi, le, le table de séance euh, qui, qui donne des conseils au, au gouvernement a fait des modèles qui ont dit que juste avec la vaccination, on ne peut pas arrêter la propagation du virus aussi, des variantes, parce qu'il il, il se propage très vite. En effet, chez nous, euh, 60, presque 70 de nos cas sont de variantes. Et euh, donc, on, on, euh, la course de variantes, ça, ça se propage beaucoup plus vite qu'on peut vacciner. Donc, euh, ça prend les deux ensemble, de, de continuer à vacciner les gens et d'avoir de des, euh, des précautions euh, euh, strictes, plus strictes qu'on a actuellement, euh, qui incluent euh, une ordonnance de rester chez vous. Euh, donc, euh, euh, avec les deux ensemble, moi, je pense qu'on pourrait faire, euh, on peut avoir une différence en quatre semaines. Euh, et, mais si on n'ajoute pas des mesures plus strictes, à mon avis, ça va traîner plus que, ça va traîner quatre, six, huit semaines, beaucoup plus longtemps. On, on va fermer, on va ouvrir, on va fermer, on va rouvrir. Ça va causer beaucoup plus de dommages à la long terme. Donc, euh, une bonne quatre semaines avec toutes les précautions en place et une chance de vacciner, je pense qu'on va être, dans un mois, on va être dans une meilleure place sûrement pour qu'on puisse ouvrir et, et commencer à, à, à commencer à avoir un débit de vaccination importante, une diminution importante au niveau des cas. Et en ce moment-là, ça, ça va nous permettre de, de réouvrir un peu. Au niveau des autres statistiques, bien sûr, on a j'ai fermé quatre écoles pendant la fin de semaine parce que on a eu des, des pas mal des on a eu des cas. Mais euh, ce n'est pas parce qu'il y avait euh, un problème avec euh, les flambées dans ces écoles. Euh, je peux vous donner un exemple. Une école avec quatre, quatre cas, mais euh, aucune, aucune euh, relation entre les quatre cas. C'est à travers des écoles, différentes classes, euh, mais euh, ça, à cause des progressions qu'on doit prendre, à cause des isolations, etc., euh, c'était difficile à, à, à faire euh, euh, le, le tracé de contact et aussi euh, de, 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 de faire des opérations à l'école parce que euh, beaucoup des personnes, des personnels aussi étaient obligés de rester chez eux à cause de l'isolation. Donc, on a fermé les quatre. Euh, nous avons, so de, depuis euh, à peu près quelques semaines, nous, a, nous avons 61 cas dans 27 écoles. On, nous avons, euh, dans notre région, 120 écoles. À travers l'Ontario, il y a à peu près 2400 euh, cas euh, dans 1024 euh, euh, écoles. Euh, euh, et n'oubliez pas qu'il y a 4000 écoles à travers l'Ontario avec 2 millions d'étudiantes. Donc, c'est un petit euh, chiffre. Euh, il y a toujours, euh, il y a toujours euh, la question, est-ce qu'on est qu devrait fermer les écoles? Est-ce qu'on devrait les, les fermer ou ouvrir? Euh, bien sûr, euh, c'est vraiment, c'est pas juste nous, il y a beaucoup d'autres, euh, surtout aujourd'hui, il y avait une annonce de la Coalition de santé des enfants avec Chio, l'hôpital euh, d'enfants de, de, de Toronto, etc., qui ont, qui ont vraiment dit que ça vient de l'extérieur qui rentre à l'école. Donc, si on a un taux communautaire de COVID, COVID élevé, ça va rentrer de, dans les écoles. Donc, euh, pour se combattre et d'éviter de, de fermer les écoles, en effet, faut, euh, les écoles devraient être les dernières à, à fermer et les premières à ouvrir, selon eux, et puis je suis d'accord avec ça. Et euh, qu'est-ce qu'on devrait faire aussi, c'est vraiment de, 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 de mettre des, des mesures très strictes pour qu'on puisse diminuer la propagation qu'on voit dans la communauté. Il euh, faut dire aussi, parce que les écoles, une fois que ça rentre dans les écoles, on peut le contrôler, mais si on a beaucoup de cas, euh, ça, va, ça va vraiment cause des problèmes opérationnels. Et aussi, il faut dire que le stock, on commence à diminuer les cas dans la communauté, euh, ils vont moins rentrer dans les écoles. Donc, ça commence en communauté, ça rentre dans les écoles. Ce n'est pas que ça commence à l'école et rentre en communauté.
Donc, ça, c'est très sûr. C'est pour ça que je n'ai pas fermé toutes les écoles dans notre région. Bien sûr, on va avoir une relâche de, de printemps euh, la semaine prochaine. Euh, je veux souligner que c'est très important de rester chez vous, de ne pas aller jouer avec des autres enfants, de ne pas euh, recevoir pas des autres enfants chez vous, parce que ça, ce, ceci est arrivé pendant les fêtes de Noël et nous avons eu euh, quatre fois plus des cas chez les enfants. Et euh, c'était une des raisons pour laquelle nous avons euh, un délai de rentrer à l'école après le mois de janvier euh, passé. Donc, euh, je vous prie, restez chez vous le plus possible euh, et ne pas accepter les autres enfants chez vous euh, parce qu'on on veut vraiment éviter euh, que on a cette augmentation importante des variantes parce que ces variantes sont plus, plus difficiles à contrôler. Euh, ils, ils, ils rendent les, les personnes plus malades. Ils, euh, ils rendent, il y a beaucoup, une taux d'admission à l'hôpital est plus élevé. Le taux aux admissions de soins intensifs est beaucoup plus élevé. Et qu'est-ce qu'on voit? On voit plutôt les, les personnes euh, moins de 60 ans, plus en plus, qui rentrent aux soins intensifs parce qu'on commence à vacciner les personnes plus âgées. Au niveau, euh, au niveau des, euh, euh, des flambées, il n'y a pas beaucoup de qui a changé dans nos... Euh, toujours, euh, on, a, on a quelques, on a quelques euh, 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 flambées, euh, mais la plupart des flambées n'ont pas de résidence, c'est plutôt les, les, les personnes qui travaillent, qui travaillent, les personnels. Euh, donc... Euh, euh, c'est tout pour, pour, au, niveau de au niveau des infections. Donc, euh, les bonnes nouvelles, c'est qu'on commence à avoir un peu de progression avec nos vaccins. Euh, je veux dire qu'en euh, effet, nous allons recevoir un peu plus de vaccins. Donc, euh, on, a, on a planifié des cliniques d'ici euh, le, le 7 mai et avec euh, euh, une, douzaine, une douzaine la semaine prochaine et huit par, par jour, euh, par semaine euh, pour les prochaines quatre semaines après. Euh, avec, euh, on, on, a problème, on a à peu près 33 000 doses à, à donner. Déjà, 10 000, euh, presque 10 000 rendez-vous sont faits depuis vendredi. Et, et euh, dès demain, euh, les personnes de 60 ans et plus pourront, euh, pourront se enregistrer pour avoir le vaccin aussi. Il euh, faut dire aussi qu'on on va, euh, va recevoir euh, les euh, AstraZeneca euh, dans notre région pour nos, euh, nos euh, médecins primaires aussi, les cliniques primaires, et aussi nous allons euh, recevoir dans les trois pharmacies euh, auxquelles je n'avais pas le choix, je n'avais pas de, de mots à dire. Euh, on, a, on a trois, mais il va y avoir au, plus. On essaie d'avoir une à Cornwall, une à Ingleside avec AstraZeneca. Ça s'en vient cette semaine aussi pour les personnes 55 et plus. Euh, J'aimerais aussi juste vous montrer où on est rendu pour vous donner un peu d'autres... Euh, une autre idée que j'avais donnée ici au niveau de, de, de les phases 2. Euh, donc, euh, comme, comme je dis, dès demain, on va être capable, on va, vous pouvez prendre rendez-vous 60 ans et plus. On va avoir des personnes avec des maladies chroniques. On, on va les commencer avec, euh, avec leur médecin qui vont donner les vaccins. Euh, on, nous allons euh, visiter les, euh, les autres maisons de groupe, euh, euh, etc., les appartements. Des, euh, on a beaucoup des aînés. Euh, nos, nos équipes mobiles vont le faire dès euh, cette, cette fin de semaine. Euh, et aussi, j'espère qu'on va commencer bientôt, un peu plus tôt que mai, euh, dépendamment du débit de vaccins qu'on va recevoir euh, au niveau euh, des travailleurs essentiels qui pourront pas travailler chez eux, euh, soit les policiers, les enseignantes, etc. Donc, euh, pour nous, euh, ça procède bien. On est rendu presque à 30 000 doses de données euh, dès aujourd'hui et on, on, on envisage de donner euh, une autre 33 000 à peu près euh, d'ici euh, les prochaines quatre semaines euh, jusqu'aux euh, premières semaines de mai. Euh, J'espère recevoir euh, euh, les allocations euh, pour le mois de mai. Comme ça, on pourrait ouvrir des autres cliniques pour, pour, pour procéder euh, en mois de mai. Donc, euh, 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 ça, ça c'est à mon avis, c'est une, une bonne chose, euh, mais euh, on va commencer à vacciner les gens. Euh, on va aussi avoir euh, vacciné, comme je dis, si on, a, a, si on a rajoute 33 000 au moins, on va avoir euh, rendu à 63 000, 64 000 euh, doses, de doses données dans notre région, euh, qui est une bonne pas. Euh, d'ici fin avril ou première semaine de mai, et on pourrait progresser avec des doses beaucoup plus élevées euh, en mois de mai. 
nous allons recevoir un débit, euh, je pense, à mon avis, plus haut euh, en, mois de, en mois de mai. Euh, et aussi, on s'attend aussi de recevoir euh, le vaccin de Johnson Johnson euh, fin avril aussi. Donc, ça, ça va, ça va être une autre chose qui, à mon avis, va pousser comme euh, les, autres, les, les, les dates un peu plus proches, euh, euh, un peu plus tôt pour commencer les autres, les autres phases. So that's it uh, for uh, for that. I'm just going to uh, answer some questions here. Um, ask about uh, uh, schools, and I've, I addressed that. Um, uh, talked about school. I've addressed that essentially. Um, 70 and over, and so I've addressed the questions because they're mostly uh, uh, related to uh, OMA and school closures. So, uh, Jenna, uh, we'll open it up to uh, questions from the media now, please. Thank you, Dr. Paul. Merci. Our first question comes from Philip Blanchard, Morrisburg leader. Please go ahead. Hi, Dr. Paul. Um, Hi, my first question is about the shutdown slash emergency break. Yeah. Um, this, uh, this latest one has fewer restrictions compared to the previous two. Things yeah. were rejigged to allow some businesses to stay open yeah. that weren't before. Mm -hmm. um, but there are certainly some uh, failings in that when it comes to capacities and, and access. Are you in favor if the province doesn't do anything about issuing some additional Section 22 mm -hmm. orders to kind of fill in the gaps? Yeah. Yes, I am. As a matter of fact, uh, you, we have been discussing that as a fallback with my colleagues. Um, you know, that I, if I would do that, I would like to do it on a regional basis so we won't have inter-regional variability. And that's the reason that we're, as a plan A, we'd like to have more stricter um, guidelines and restrictions, including stay at home uh, provincially so that will there won't be any inter-regional variability. Um, it's easier to impose when you don't declare an emergency. It's easier to uh, enforce and so on than a Section 22, but a Section 22 will be our fallback. But I do understand that there are serious discussions to add further restrictions uh, to the current lockdown provincially. Okay, thank you. And uh, next question. Um, you've taken more of an education first, enforcement second approach, the carrot rather than the stick. Um, but we're a year in. So are you as tolerant of the education part or do you think people should know by now? I think people should know by now, and I've got to balance that with with also understanding that people are fed up. So I got to balance the two. But where where is like I said that where there is uh, a blatant uh, issue, particularly in workplaces, we um, not us, but we we work with Ministry of Long Term with the Ministry of uh, Labor, and they have given um, the stick rather than the carrot in several situations. Um, I'm hoping that we don't have to do that, but you're right that, you know, uh, people, it's been a year in more than that, uh, Philip, and and I think that uh, we need to uh, uh, step it up a bit, but I'm, I am hoping, like, again, we get some collaboration. The other thing, too, is um, uh, one of the things that we're seeing, most of our cases are gatherings and homes and those type of things, so that's one thing that I'd like to, I'd like to have more enforcement on, but uh, again, it's very hard sometimes to enforce a party and those type of things. But again, um, I know that the police are helping us, and if if need be, we will uh, we will find people. But although I don't want to do that, as you know. Okay, and my last question is um, the timeline for expanding clinics in the UHU. Mm -hmm. um, what are you working on that specifically to getting more vaccines, uh, more vaccine clinics in South Dundas? For example, um, I've talked to several readers of our paper who are concerned because there is like help to get people who maybe don't have rides or whatever to Glengarry, from Glengarry and Stormont to Cornwall yeah. around uh, Prescott Russell to get them the vaccinations there. But um, Dundas County and specifically South Dundas seems to be kind of in the far corner and ignored. So well, that's not that's something that we're going to address. I will be speaking with a municipality to ensure that we have some kind of a, either a pop up clinic there or some or a pharmacy there. That, those are the type of things that we're looking at right now to ensure that we have equitable um, equitable approach. We 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 are doing one in Embrim. I'm looking and doing uh, there as well. So that's thank you for bringing it up. We are aware and we're we're trying as much as possible to to get access to have an equitable approach um, through either doctor's offices, pharmacies, or pop-up clinics. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Next question, Nick Seabrook, Seaway News. Please go ahead. Hi, Dr. Paul. Hi, Nick. Uh, I have a question about those high-risk populations you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, today, the Promise announced they were going into phase two of vaccinating high-risk yeah. populations, including organ transplant recipients, yeah. uh, MS patients. Does that include the people you were discussing earlier? 
There's two. Uh, the, yeah, it includes those high risk uh, chronic patients. That's what I meant. Yeah, there's a highest risk and the high risk. So the highest risk are those with uh, transplant and um, you know trans um, uh, transplant and a few other uh, chronic renal failure and so on. Yeah. C can that be a? Are those individuals of any age or is there an age restriction? That's any age. Okay. Uh, my second question is about. Uh, the vaccinations at, uh, at pharmacies. Uh, what are the three locations in the region, and uh, when do you think Cornell will get a location? Well, we're trying to work on that. Jim, Mc, Jim McManel is working hard for us, and I've and I've and I've pressed the the ministry as well uh, to get something in Cornwall ASAP. The three pharmacies that we know of right now, and again, I, I've stressed it before, I have not had no say in that, and they're not even connected with us. We're not providing the vaccine; they're getting it separately, uh, but it's allocated to us, but uh, but separately in terms of you know per population, it's going to them. Uh, there's one in Winchester. Uh, in Seaway, I think it's called. There's one in Hawkesbury and there's one in Embrum. And I, I, I had no say in that. I, I wanted to have more, you know, more. I will, we will be getting more, particularly in Cornwall. We need one in Cornwall for sure. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Next question, Nelson Zanbergen, Nation Valley News. Please go ahead. Oh, hi, doctor. Hi. Um, I had a, um, a listener or a reader, they were wondering about their uh, loved one who is an invalid essentially, and they're probably in that higher risk group that you were mentioning. Are you sending people around to vaccinate? They were wondering yes. how do they line up? How do they get they, that lined up? Let's get it. You, most, of the, most of the ones that we're, that, that we're doing, uh, home care, they get home care and the home care gives us a list and we will be sending our EMS to go v uh, vaccinate at home. Yes. If they haven't, if they're not, if they haven't, they should have been on a list. If not, call us because we're taking those names down because we're gonna we're sending our EMS to vaccinate them, for sure. Okay. okay? Uh, I just had a question as well about the, there was those uh, three uh, medical officers of health that uh, teamed up in a letter. I don't yeah. think you were part of that letter. No, is there a little I, bit of? Sorry. No, let me interrupt you right away because I know yeah. I had the question. Uh, no, yeah. it's because I I sent a press release out last week. Okay. In that regard, that's one I showed before as Chair Como and representing all medical officers of health. They just sent that just to add, uh, just to add their their um, their opinion, which is the exact same as mine. Is there a group of doctors who are taking a harder line compared to yourself, or there's no, no, no okay, no, not really. Um, we have a consensus across uh, the, the medical office of health that we need to be to, to have more strict uh, restrictions. Now, some people may argue, you know, this level, but all of us are on the same page that we need to have more than just what's what's out there now. Okay, thank you, doctor. You're welcome. Next question, Francis Resin, standard freeholder. Please go ahead. Hi there, Dr. Paul. Hi. Uh, listen, my question has to do with the vaccination. I was wondering if um, we are either higher or lower than the provincial stats for the percentage of people that are eligible for, for the vaccines. Do we have like a, a lower percentage of people uh, registering for it or? No, not really. Uh, at this point, it's hard to compare, uh, but we, you know, we... Uh, we, we're our rate, our, our uptake rate is just like anybody else. I, I haven't got those numbers yet to really tell you, but uh, judging from what we're seeing, I'm not seeing us being different than others. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Do those joining by phone have questions? Press star six to unmute. Ceux qui se joignent par téléphone ont-ils des questions? Appuyez les touches étoiles six pour désactiver le mode silencieux. Bill Kingston, Cornwall News Watch. Can you hear me okay, Dr. Paul? Yeah, yeah, Bill. Okay, yeah. Perfect. I just wanted to ask you, you mentioned that you closed the four schools, but I don't think you mentioned where they were. Uh, can you share the locations? Yeah, hold on. Hold on. I've got it here. Uh, all the, first of all, they're on Prescott Russell. Okay. They're all on Prescott Russell. Um, one is uh, St. Uh, Patrick, Académie de Seigneurie, uh, Castleman, Ecole Secondaire Castleman, and one more, which is uh, Hawkesbury. So they're all on Prescott Russell. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. That's my only question. You're welcome. D'autres questions par téléphone? Other questions by phone? Those are all the questions for today, Dr. Paul. Thank you very much. Merci.